Are we ready? Right. Good evening, everybody, and, and welcome to another yet another Zoom board meeting, board meeting. It's getting to be the norm. We're getting quite used to sitting in our our lounges and having having these meetings now, and um, it's quite comfy. Uh, we have apologies from Shelley Warwick and James Coots. Are there any other apologies? Um, just noted that the mayor put in his apologies. Okay. Would someone like to move those apologies be accepted, please? Oh. Okay. Cam, Marilyn, do you want to second it? Yep. Okie dokie, thanks. Okay, we have declarations of interest. I've got a, a declaration of interest for the Friends of the Rotunda meeting. Are there any other declarations of interest items on the agenda? Um, I'd just like to note that I'm a member of the um, Canoe Polo community and there is an application for funding from the Central Canoe Polo Association. Oh, indeed. Oh, oh. Do you want me to resend you the Zoom? You're right. Okay, we'll carry on anyway. Shall we carry on, Samara? Are you okay? Okay, okay. Okay, now we've had a couple of sad deaths in, in Old Tacky over the last few days. Unfortunately, it was um, both by their own hand and which is becoming all too common at the moment and very, very sad considering one, they were both quite young. One of them as young as 12. Um, so I would like to take a moment's silence for, for these, these young ladies and, um, and just reflect on, on how lucky we are that, you know, that we're all still healthy and our kids are all still healthy and, and just pray that um, there's an end to this at some stage because it's just getting all too common and, and it's, it's really, really heartbreaking. So if we can just take a moment's silence, that Wonderful. Okay, thank you, everybody. And our hearts go out to the families of, of those, those poor children. So, right. Okay, first up, we have an update from Fletcher's. Welcome, Chris, to our, our meeting. Unfortunately, there's only three board members here. But there's quite a few pub members of the public, so I'm sure they will find what you have to say very, very interesting. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try and share my screen if I can... Uh, um, if I can find so can you see that presentation yes thanks Chris yep. yes, yes thanks Chris I'll try and put it in slideshow mode so hopefully that's in slideshow mode so you'll be uh, you'll be able to see that um, so I'll just give you a, a uh, a relatively quick update but as usual there's probably uh, too many photos in there um so um so i think one of the first things that i do want to touch on um and i'm going to try and use my cursor to highlight uh where i can um so there have been a number of questions around the on and off ramps uh for the expressway so i thought i'd just start uh, by just identifying uh, exactly where they are in the schematic. Um, so the, the first thing to recognise is down at the south end of the project, the current uh, northbound on-ramp from Pekka Pekka um, off the roundabout by Harrison's Garden Centre uh, and the southbound off-ramp that takes you into Waikanae. Um, once we've opened the expressway, they remain operational as they currently stand. Um, so that those two existing uh, on and off ramps uh, remain there. As you then go north through the project, uh, just before you get to Otaki Gorge Road, there is then an off ramp that goes northbound. Um, so if you are traveling into Otaki, that's where you would come off. 
Um, if you were traveling from the south and you wanted to go to to Horo or Pekka Pekka, um, your two options are you either come off at this off ramp and then head back south uh, down what is currently State Highway One, but will become a local a local road once the expressway is open, or you would come off at Waikanae at Tamawana, um, and then you would make your way north from Tamawana. Um, where this uh, off ramp is, the northbound off ramp, uh, there's also a southbound on ramp from Otaki Gorge Road. So you'll see some photos in a minute uh, where we're, we're building that roundabout and that's where the on ramp is. So again, if you're coming from Tohoro or Pekka Pekka, uh, you head north on, on the existing State Highway 1 um, and you turn right into Otaki Gorge Road and then access the expressway there and go south. Um, and then there's a north facing interchange just north of uh, the existing uh, State Highway 1, the two bridges that we opened uh, two or three years ago. Um, so again, from Otaki, if you're going northbound towards Palmerston North, that you, you'd use the on-ramp there northbound. And if you're coming from Levin uh, and want to come off into Otaki, then you would go south, use the southbound off-ramp. Um, the, there is, we are conscious that uh, in the early days, um, probably not as complicated as Transmission Gully, but uh, we are conscious that there is a risk that people uh, miss the ramps. So we will be uh, increasing communication as we get closer to the expressway opening, just so that people understand where those on and off ramps are. And just north of um, the end of the expressway, there is a, a turning circle uh, on the east side of the current State Highway 1. So we are looking at doing some safety improvements for that so that if people do miss uh, Otaki heading north, then they will be able to turn, turn around there and do it safely. Um, so just covering the, the project, so at the north end of the job, these photos were probably taken uh, two months ago, th these particular set, I've got some more recent ones. Um, so we, we stabilized the, um, the ramp north of bridge one. Um, so that was done a couple of months ago. And if you've actually been driving there yesterday or today, you'll see that we're, we're up there now with asphalt. So we've chip sealed to waterproof the uh, sub base. And now we're on with asphalting through that area. Um, also uh, at Taylor's Road, uh, we've been installing the street lights um, and actually street lights right through the job. Uh, if you drive through there at night at the moment, you'll see that the street lights are already working on those two inter interchanges. I mean, that's predominantly where the street lights are on the expressway. Um, so those street lights are already operational and that's part of our uh, pre-opening uh, testing that we're actually carrying out. Um, so working from the working from the north, that's obviously uh, Taylor's Road as it currently stands. Uh, the bottom left of the photograph where we've currently got the diversion, I have had a few questions around uh, what happens here once the expressway is open. Um, so this becomes a cul-de-sac that's effectively just for the, the few residents that live on that section um, at the north end of the, the project. Um, so in the final configuration coming out of Otaki, um, Taylor's Road will effectively be uh, the right of way and Taylor's Road will you know, continue to operate as it currently does. Um, and there'll be a give way across this existing diversion, which we change into a, a cul-de-sac. So there's a bit of work that we need to do there once we've opened the expressway. Um, so that's looking back over bridge one. You can see some of the asphalt there that's all already been laid. Um, so, you know, we're making reasonable uh, progress at that north end of the, the project. Um, going back towards uh, Otaki, you can see the uh, southbound off-ramp there and the northbound on-ramp that I was referring to. Um, so they, uh, they go on to the existing, uh, current existing State Highway 1. Um, and obviously there'll be interchanges uh, at those two locations effectively 
where my cursor is at the moment, um, and then again over over here. Um, carrying on through the through the job, you can see uh, Rahui Road uh, bridge there. I think I'll uh, there's a couple of photos in a bit. So there, there, there's a close up of the uh, off ramp and an on ramp uh, for the expressway. Um, you can see quite a bit of asphalt that's been laid. I mean, the the on ramp and off ramp have already got the asphalt and the main alignment through there has already uh, got asphalt laid. Um, this was taken probably about two weeks ago. Um, so we had a strip of asphalt to lay up against the, the concrete barriers. Um, so uh, again, through, through there, you can see the noise wall um, right here behind the milk station. Um, so that noise wall's all been all been constructed, uh, making good progress uh, through there. A bit of a close up shot of the uh, the noise wall for the milk station, and we are we are currently on with doing some uh, doing some work for the for the milk station as well as part of the property agreements. Uh, this is coming south uh, from the milk station, so over on the right hand side is the uh, railway station so a tucky railway station and just in the distance you can see the the quarry uh, that's windstones aggregates quarry um again just showing lots of asphalt that that's been laid i mean there's there's more than 120,000 tons of asphalt uh, on this project so it's uh, it's a significant uh, asphalt project for the for the region um i'm not sure what uh, transmission gully had but I mean we're way way above uh, what they've had because most of theirs is is chip seal as you'll all know. Um, going down through to the Otaki River Bridge um, so that bridge is is complete now all we've got left to do on the bridge is the the bridge markers um, and you can see uh, Otaki Gorge Road there um, existing state highway one diversion over on the the right hand side so once we actually open the expressway, uh, then we go back in and we start doing the remainder of the work on the local roads. So we can't currently do that because it will be too disruptive for the for the traffic. But as soon as we've diverted the traffic onto the expressway, we can do that. Uh, and then in the sort of middle top left of the photograph there, you can see the roundabout that we're currently building on Otaki Gorge Road. Um, and that's the uh, southbound on slip that I was on ramp that I was talking about. Uh, and the white bit in the middle of the photo there, that's the northbound off ramp. Um, they, they've actually got asphalt on them now as well. So uh, the photos are probably uh, about a month or so old. Um, that's, that's actually the roundabout top right is the roundabout. I was talking about Otaki Gorge Road. Again, the top middle, um, bottom left is the southbound on-ramp and bottom right is the northbound off-ramp that you can see there. Um, that's an aerial shot of the, in, in the bottom of the photo is the northbound off-ramp and top right-hand corner is the southbound on-ramp. Um, so that photo, again, that's probably at least uh, six to eight weeks old. Um, you can see the street, you know, there's obviously a photo there of the street lights. So the street lights are on all the way through this. And as I was driving home tonight, I noticed that they did, they did come on. Um, work, working through the job uh, on the left hand side of the photo, that's our shared path. Um, and you know, while it's probably not obvious to people, uh, the little white lines where I'm running my cursor, that's all the wire rope barrier posts. Um, so we've got a lot of wire rope barrier on the job uh, and, and as much as we can install, we're right up behind uh, the asphalt operation. Um, so we've got to lay the asphalt before we can finish constructing the medians and the shoulders and then we get in and and we do the wire rope barrier. Um, so that's a, an aerial shot uh, not far from the Kilns site. Um, so that's on Winniata Link Road. Um, so it's a, a significant culvert through there um, for 
uh, flood events, uh, and that that will be uh, designed for a, at least a one in a hundred year event. Um, on Winniata Link Road, we are also building the shared path. So you'll see a photograph in a minute. I'll I'll describe it how the shared path goes onto Winniata Link Road. Um, in actual fact, that's the one right there. Um, so the the shared path comes up the uh, east side of the expressway. Uh, it then goes onto uh, School Road. So it's well, it actually joins onto Gear Road, and it goes along Gear Road, and then carries on along School Road, and then comes off and goes down Winniata Link Road. Um, so that will be, um, you know, the Winniata Link Road's just for the a dozen or so properties that are down there it'll be a dead end but the shared path carries on and continues north all the way up to the to the river bridge um the the wire rope barrier there you can see in the the top left um like i say we've got kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of that uh installed already some of it uh we've already tensioned up uh, other areas where we need to get access behind the wire rope barrier, uh, we haven't tensioned it so that we can actually uh, get in behind the barriers. Uh, signage is, is all up as well, um, so we've made good progress on that. And I think you can start that bottom left-hand photo. Uh, you can see the, that's where one of the CCTV cameras will be, and there'll be a variable message sign there. So all of the ITS intelligent transport systems uh, were progressing really well uh, with that. Um, the, the biggest challenge we'll have at the end is then connecting it into uh, the Wellington Transport Operations Centre. Um, that's looking down onto the uh, junction of School Road and Winniata Link Road. Um, so this area in the top left, that was our Winniata Borough site um, so that's where we uh, extracted gravels uh, for the structural fill in some of the embankments um, and then the uh, surplus material that's where we uh, deposited it so that's NZ, currently NZTA land we'll return it to the same condition that we uh, we received it in but what that's managed to do is is keep thousands of trucks off the uh, local road network so that we were able to run them straight from here onto the onto the project. Um, that's at the end of Gear Road. So again, this is the shared path coming up and then the shared path will come out here, exit and go on to uh, Gear Road. Um, so there's a there's another once we've opened the expressway, we'll be going back to some of the local roads and doing a second coat chip seal as well. Um, so we've done a, a first coat chip seal on them, but you need to traffic them at least 12 months before you do the second coat chip seal. Um, going over the railway bridge, all the asphalt's done up to the railway bridge through there. Uh, all the concrete barriers are in place. Um, it, re it really is becoming just an asphalt job uh, that we've got left now. Um, so probably is worth talking uh, just about this photo. So obviously uh, the shared path comes off the Mackay Stepeka Peka project on the west side of the expressway. Um, and we've already opened the uh, southernmost end of that. Um, it continues all the way up to uh, the northernmost of these two culverts. So the southern culvert, the one on the right, that's for uh, vehicles and that takes people into Cavallo Farms. And we've done a load of safety improvements to the railway crossing there. Um, the second culvert is the one that's going to have the uh, carnations uh, printed onto the wall that's made out of the kids' handprints. Um, so that will be lit and that will be where the shared path crosses what will become the local road. And the shared path will then go back on itself across the railway crossing and then up the eastern side of the expressway um, and the eastern side of the railway line. Um, so at the moment, we're just working through uh, when we will be able to open the shared path in relation to the uh, expressway. 
Uh, but one thing that we do have to build is where the shared path crosses the current state highway one at this culvert. Um, that is a signalized uh, crossing similar to the, the one that's at Tamawana Road. Um, so we will be installing that once the traffic's been diverted onto the expressway. Um, obviously, we don't want to do it while there's uh, high volumes of traffic going through there at the moment. Um, and then just heading down south, just a few more aerial photos. Um, that wetland there right now, you can hardly see any of that growth um, because of all that water that we've had over the past uh, two weeks. But when it does dry out, uh, what actually happens is you've got uh, four individual wetlands in there. But when you have large water events, it just, it just looks like one big wetland. Just a, a few photos uh, coming down. And um, that's obviously currently, that's the end of the shared path as we've got it open uh, at this stage. And, and like I say, we'll, we'll open the rest of it as soon as we possibly, as soon as we possibly can. Um, and then where it uh, intersects with um, the existing Mackay's to Pekka Pekka uh, at, the, at the north end of that project. Um, so what, what you can see here is, is obviously you've got the southbound ramp there at the top of the southbound carriageway at the top of the picture. Uh, where that red truck is, if that continues straight, that will be the northbound expressway uh, two lanes. And then over here at the bottom of the picture, that will become so the, the existing uh, road that comes up from the Pekka Pekka roundabout that will continue north and that will be uh, that will then be on the local arterial road or what's currently the state highway one uh, diversion through there. Uh, so just a, again a few more uh, recent photographs. Um, so on the left hand side here in, in May, um, we wanted to get some Imogpa down. So that's the final surfacing. So we just wanted to get some of that down so that we've given it a go so that when we get back there um, when the weather's better in in September and um, then we've already you know done some of that work so we it's only a 25 mil thick layer um, but that's what reduces the noise and that's also what uh, reduces the spray on the on the expressway um, so I'm not sure whether there was anybody on the steam train uh, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, we there was a stream, steam train that went from uh, Paraparaumu all the way up to Manukau and then, uh, or maybe Ohau, and then turned around uh, or stopped and then just went went back. So we there were three trips during the day, um, and myself, Steve Finley, and Mike Sarton uh, took turns on each of the trains just to talk people through the expressway. Uh, you definitely get a different view when you're on the rail line looking at the expressway than uh, than on the the existing state highway one and this was just a, ha a handout so we've got some of these in the office if anybody wants one it's just a bit of information about the expressway itself um you know and a, a bit more about the ecological uh and the cultural uh work that we've done on the project um, so that we did hand them out on the day uh, when we when the train train trip was running. Uh, so that's basically it for me. So I'm happy to I'm happy to take questions. Thank, thank you, Chris. That was great. Um, certainly is uh, moving along a bit now, isn't it? Uh, does yeah. anybody have any questions I'd like to ask of Chris? Can't actually see because the presentation's still up. I'll, so I'll take it down. Sorry. Okay, uh, that's all right. <laughs> there you go, Christine. Okay, thanks, Emil. Right, does anybody have any questions I'd like to ask? Marilyn. Just, hi, Chris, how are you? Um, yeah, not bad. Can you just clarify for me? And I know I've asked this before and you've told me before, but I just want clarity. What's the intersection from the Otaki Gorge Road going on where it's a T section now? What's that going to look like? So, so in the final configuration, 
Otaki Gorge Road going north into Otaki Township has the priority. Yeah. So south of there, the existing State Highway 1 south of there will be a T intersection. So um, if, I could, if I could bring the presentation up again, I'd, I'd, I'd show you, Marilyn. Um, but, it, but effectively, as you're coming out of Otaki, the road will sweep round into Otaki Gorge Road, and yeah. that, will be, that will be the priority way for traffic. So anybody coming from Tohoro going into uh, Otaki will, will end up uh, coming to a stop sign, or I'm not sure whether it's a stop sign or a give way sign, um, but it's a, uh, it's a yield line on Otaki Gorge Road, and then they will, le they will turn left onto uh, you know, what is Otaki Gorge Road going over the river bridge. So, so where that T section is at the moment, it's quite narrow. Is that going to be widened at all or is it going to stay the same? I'm gonna, uh, just bear with me, Marilyn. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm, I am going to bring it up because it's probably easier if I bring up the the right photo. Um, no, go back. Um, so, so here, so what will happen is Otaki Gorge Road. This will sweep round here, and then this this road. We've got a bit of work to do here. Um, but we can't we can't do that until we've moved the traffic onto the expressway so there's reduced traffic but effectively there will be a give way here and the traffic will be brought in as you know as close to a 90 degree as we possibly can um, but it will be effectively on the outside of a bend that that traffic will be intersecting with Otaki Gorge Road. Okay, so is that going to stay the same width as it is now, or is it going to get wider? <coughs> um, I, no, I, I don't think I don't think it gets wider. Um, I think it will get a similar sort of width. <coughs> um, what what I can probably do, Marilyn, is actually get some design drawings that show it better. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I could share them at, at the next session that you're going to be at, so that it's a bit clearer. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, okay. Does anybody else have any questions I'd like to ask Chris in regards to the expressway? No? Nobody? Okay, well, Chris, thank you very, very much once again for coming to our meeting and, and showing some light on, on the progress of the of the expressway. We've watched it go through, unlike the southern one where you couldn't see because it all happened behind hills and things. We've actually been able to observe most of this one, which has been really great for the community, I think. But um, thank you, and we will see you at our next, meet next meeting. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, so we've done that. So we're now moving into public speaking time. Now I'm going to ask Samara, because it'll be easier for her, if she can run there, invite people to speak in their, in their, in their allocated slot. They have three minutes speaking time. So, and at the end of the end of your speaking, board members may, may wish to ask you some questions. So just bear with us with the, with the screen and everything, and we'll put it in your capable hands now, Samara. Thank you. Um, and just to remind um, grant applicants, after they've spoken, you're more than welcome to leave the meeting. Um, and I can update you in the next couple of days on the outcome of the meeting, because um, we do have another presentation after public speaking. So it'll be a little bit further down the agenda that the grant application report will be considered. Um, so first public speaking is Andy Fraser from Wataki College. I'll turn up Tate. Um, thanks, Samara. Um, thank you for that presentation, Chris. I was trying to get unmuted to ask a question, but that's okay. I'll I'll grab that later. Um, I just want to speak on our application for the revitalization of the Mangapodi stream, which runs along um, the side of Mill Road in Ōtaki. Um, this is a part of a combined project of our Kahui Ako, Kahui Tokotoko Ōtaki, which is our combined schools, um, Tihoro. Um, 
Waitoho, Otaki College, uh, St. Peter Chanel, Otaki Primary, uh, Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Te Rito and Whakutipuranga Rua Mano. Um, so the idea basically is that um, a major focus of our graduate profile and also what we're trying to do across our learning community is to build young people's capacity around Rokawatanga. And we felt that the most appropriate way to do that was to actually take on a project that would actually bring back to life um, a stream that was of um, massive significance historically in our township to local iwi. And um, it goes right back to um, not only for Kai, but also Karakia Whakahaere, where Tainui used to come down on a regular basis, uh, etc. Um, it's gone from a pristine stream that used to have a um, gravel and shell bed that could be seen quite clearly um, to a stream which is basically mud infested and uh, has all the runoff coming from market gardening, roadways, etc. The idea basically is that um, all our schools will look at um, setting up projects along that Mangapodi um, from uh, clearing, riparian planting, water testing, uh, using tuna as a gauge to check on the health and uh, well-being of the water. Um, and ultimately, in the next five years, we want to see um, exactly how or what impact we can make on, on that stream. So um, you'll see in the grant that a lot of the stuff that is, has been applied for is around um, water quality. It's around being able to capture and release tuna. Um, it's about being able to plant. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell, but it's a great way of Mātauranga Māori meeting Western science and putting something together, um, building our stories and knowledge of our township. And hopefully at the end of the day, our kids and their kids will be able to walk along a really pristine um, stream down the, down the line. So we're hoping it's a really good story. Tēnā tato. Thanks, thanks for that, Andy. And um, if you do anywhere in a half as good a job as that uh, Friends of the Otaki River are doing, it'll, it'll be spectacular. And uh, I'm sure Max Lutz and, and co will actually have loads of information and advice for you along the way. I, I've already received some, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might have. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask Andy? No? Okay, Andy, feel free to stay, but you can, you know, go go home to because I think you're still in the office by the look Sorry, of it. Sorry, Chris, I did have a question. You do? Oh, it is your hand. Yeah. Kia Kim. Yeah, Kim. Yeah, kia ora, Andy. Um, thank you for coming along and speaking to us. Hey, um, so with the um the students that are gonna be involved with this, is it particular mm -hmm. years or is it just whoever puts their hands up? Or so I was just interested to see um what part of Otaki College will actually be. Um, participating in the stream revival. At, at, at this particular point in time, Cam, it's probably looking at um, focusing on years seven to ten. Um, it gets quite difficult to release our senior students because they're so invested in NCEA, um, you know, levels one to three. But in saying that, we um, we've already got um, some of our um, departments actually looking at how those students could actually use the Mangapodi as a meaningful and authentic way to. Um, fit into their NCA. Um, so uh, whilst I say that it's not currently seniors, um, who knows what that might look like um, two, three years down the track. Excellent. Yeah. Once they will start getting keen, you'll, um, you'll probably be inundated with kids volunteering. Well, uh, does anybody else have a question? Got, what's that? I said we certainly hope so, Chris. Oh, I think you will. Yeah, you'll be a day out of the classroom, won't it? <laughs> I think we're actually experiencing a number of kids having days out of the classrooms often. It's supposed to be an educational day. Yes, Ma yes. Marilyn, did you have a question? Okay. Anybody else got any questions of Andy? Well, thank, thank you very, very much, Andy. And um, we'll certainly have a really good look at this application because I think it's going to be great for the, the children of, of Old Tech who actually get involved in something so important as this. Kapai, thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. Paul Marie. Right. Next person on the list is Jess Ward. Welcome, Jess. Kia ora koutou. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight to Otaki Community Board. 
Uh, my current role is principal of Parapara Umu Beach School. Um, uh, but I'm speaking to you tonight as the president of the Otaki Kapiti Principals Association. Uh, we have 17 schools from uh, Paikakariki right through to Otaki. Um, and I have been uh, making applications on behalf of the various schools to apply for some extra money towards sports so our kids can stay active. Um, so tonight, my, the application that I've put forward is for um, $500 for each of the schools, Te Horo, uh, Waitohu, Otaki Primary and Otaki College. Um, and that money is primarily for schools to assist families um, by paying, helping pay sports fees um, and also maybe a little bit of equipment if children need hockey sticks or, um, you know, uh, training gear, shoes, that sort of thing. It's not a lot of money, but um, we are finding with the global pandemic Oh, sorry, my cat's just decided to enter the screen. Um, families are under more and more pressure, and so are schools. Um, we are finding our families have been hit really hard across the coast, and schools are actually, even though we're financially stretched, you know, at the moment I'm providing bedding for students, I'm providing, we're providing our lunches for students, we're providing um, clothing, shoes, helping our families find rentals. Um, and we don't want kids to miss out on sports activities. If, if we've got a trip or a camp, we will pay for it and make sure every child goes. Um, and same with sports. We don't want kids to miss out on being active um, and experiencing those opportunities for physical well-being and mental well-being um, just because their families are feeling um, strapped for cash. Thanks, Jess. Does anybody have any questions I'd like to ask Jess? Is that you, Cam? Um, not necessarily a question, but I just want to say thank you very much, Jess, for the work that you're doing in providing the bedding and the extra support work, which is you know outside the, the general requirements of schools. It's um, great to see that people are doing those sorts of things to make sure our kids are fed and well and, uh, and at school. Thank you for the thanks. Um, I know lots of principals are doing exactly the same as my school, so yeah. Yeah, it seems seems a bit sad that, that schools are having to step up and um, and actually provide these things that, that we didn't even think about when we were growing up as kids. I mean, we've had hard times, but they're a lot harder now than they were when we were children. So yeah. thanks again, Jess. And I think Marilyn's got something to say. Yeah, thank you, Jess. I I've been listening to what you've got to say and keep thinking, gosh, aren't we lucky that if we don't have to be in that situation and, and thank God for people like you. Um, and I just really wanted to say, you know, there's a lot of community service clubs out there. I know Rotary for sure would jump in there and help you if they knew what the need was. So, you know, just keep that communication line open. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks again, Jess. And you're welcome to stay or or not, whichever. But Samara will get will get back to you in regards to the grant application. Thank you. Yes, Samara's beautiful children go to my school, so I'm sure <laughs> I'll hear from Tamara soon. Okay, thank you, Jess. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. So next okay. person on the public speaking list is Di Buchan from um, Friends of the Otaki Rotunda. Right, Di, where is she? Yep, I've just unmuted. Oh, okay. So um, welcome, welcome, I, Di. I don't know why my um why you can't see me on the screen, but it, well, you've got a picture of me taken a few years ago, which is better than looking at me today. Um, so we've applied for, uh, for the Friends of the Rotunda. We've applied for uh, five hundred dollars to go towards the cost of repairing the rotunda. Uh, we're trying to. Um, just provide additional funds to what DOC is able to raise. There's no way that they're going to be able to uh, pay for 
uh, the Rotunda repairs. They've applied in the budget for $50,000, but we still haven't heard whether that was successful. Um, so we're just doing whatever we can to raise bits of money all over the place to add to what DOC are able to provide. But the sooner we can get a fund uh, um, together, you know, we already have all the reports needed now to do the work. So uh, the last report that had to be done was an archaeological survey, and that was completed a few months ago. So we're ready to go. And um, we know what has to be done and we know the order in which it has to be done. We just need the funding to get started. Thank, thanks, Di. Um, I've actually, as you know, I've got a conflict on this one, but, um, but I am enjoying being on that group and, and it's just amazing to see what, what's, what that building could end up being like in the end. And we're already having questions from people about uses for it. so. You know, the sooner we get started, the better I feel. But does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. I, I should um, maybe just add to that, that we have been, um, tomorrow I'm taking a group of people up to have a look at the Rotunda who are thinking of that it could be a good use for them, a good venue, I mean. We've had letters from some of the schools and from um, the Kapiti Orchestra to say they would definitely be interested in using the Rotunda once it is uh, operational. The Rotunda has in the past had concerts and balls and all sorts of activities in there. And so it's really exciting. I think the schools are very excited about being able to use it for a multi-school um, educational experience and uh, all of this will add, all these letters that we are now commissioning will be um, very helpful in supporting our applications for funding. Th thanks, thanks Di, that, that's great. Well if nobody has any questions we'll um, we will move on. You can stay or leave whichever you, you wish to do. Yeah, I might leave because I haven't had any dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the good thing with Zoom I... meetings. Just, just, <laughs> le just leave the meeting. There's a little oh. button on your screen somewhere that says Oh, meeting. yes, of course. Okay, Found it? good. Thank you very much for listening. You're welcome. And thank you for all the help you've given us up till now. You're welcome. We'll see you later. So next person on the list is Jean Chamberlain. And she is speaking about a grant from the Autaki RSA Welfare Team. Well, we welcome. Have a slight welcome, difficulty Jean. Um, with Jean in the sense that we've got a couple of people in the waiting or in the meeting, and they don't have their name on. So I may have to ask um, a couple of people to unmute and perhaps identify themselves because we've got somebody listed as Otaki and somebody with user and a number. So if we can perhaps just check in with them. Right. Are you there, Jean? Right. She'll be there somewhere. Have you had any luck, Fiona, with anybody? Not yet. I have sent messages via chat. I also have a Frank Neal um, in here as well who I've asked he, to unmute. He, he's he's, um, yeah. he's on the media, paper. so that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay, um, great. I might go to the next person on the list yeah. just so we're not um, waiting for too long. Um, so Neil is the next person on the list, and he's from Autaki Surf Life Saving Club. Well, well, welcome, yep, welcome, you. Neil. Welcome, Neil, and um, fun. We all saw what a fabulous birthday party you had for the surf club at, at the RSA the other week. It looked like it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and a uh, uh, hundred years is a long time, and takes a while to celebrate that sort of uh, situation. <laughs> you were you were there um, at the beginning, were you? Uh, no, I joined a bit, <laughs> bit after it had first formed. <laughs> okay, carry on, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, this application is for funding to purchase equipment for our junior uh, surf life-saving section. Uh, they are aged from 7 till 13. Um, the, the first group, 7 and 8, mostly operate on the beach and, and just do little wading races, but... The body boards that we are looking for, nine and 10 year olds start to use those. Uh, and then the eight foot six foam boards that we are desirous of 
11 up uh, use those. Um, to do that, they must have a 200 metre swimming certificate. Uh, and it's always under supervision of um, parents on a ratio of one to five. And um, usually there's half a dozen lifeguards on hand as well. So it's a very safe, um, but quite um, well uh, looked after group. Um, the juniors have been growing each year. Uh, this past season, we had 62. And of course, the beach is a hard uh, area to work in, and we constantly need to replace our, our equipment and provide for the increased numbers. Um, in the past, we've had um, a new world raffle where we usually get a, make about a thousand dollars. With COVID, we stopped running that because people were, you know, short of cash and not many were going out. Um, and the other big fundraiser for us was the Okeke Kite Festival, which. Uh, didn't run last year and that was we, we usually make about um, almost two thousand dollars from that so um, we're just a little bit stuck for funding this year we try to be independent but um, this is one time when we do need to get a little bit, bit of a helping hand um, I didn't put quotes in because um, we we have Torpedo 7 supply the body boards and, and they have specials from time to time and we usually operate by trying to pick up specials and get them you know, 20% off or something. Uh, and Sonic Surfcraft are the only New Zealand based um, suppliers of knee boards and, and we need three of those. So um, all the information is based on their, on their uh, websites and that's what I use to put the, uh, the funding it's the cost too. User number. Sorry. Oh. So um, anyway, that that's that's uh, the the story, and of course, these people um, each year uh, out of that group, there's probably about uh, ten to twelve, thirteen year olds, and when they become 14, they're eligible or old enough to become lifeguards and the training goes on. But um, these kids are already surf aware um, and, and pretty much safety conscious because they get taught that right from the early stages. So um, that's, that's it. Um, so thank you for listening. Th thank you, Neil. I, I see things on Facebook with, with the kids that are, are doing the surf lifesaving and, and not only is it great for safety, but they appear to have an enormous amount of pleasure and fun out of it as well, which is, which is great. So does anybody have any questions I'd like to ask Neil? No? Oh, well, thank you, Neil. The mic, uh, Di, you can stay on there, whichever you would like to do. <laughs> I think it might be dinner time. Okay, well, you, you, you come and satisfy your hunger. We'll see yeah. you later. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank bye you. Bye. Right, we'll just um, try one more. Is Jean Chamberlain online? Oh, oh here she is. Hi, Jean. Well, welcome. Oh, oh she's muted. And we can't. Does she need to unmute herself? Um... She is unmuted, um, but I think perhaps um, Jean's microphone isn't working because she's not on mute in the Zoom meeting. Yeah. Jean, your microphone doesn't appear to be working. You might need to turn something up or on or... <laughs> Chris, would you like me to yeah. go to the next person while she just yeah, yeah, yeah. sorts it? But we'll just we'll just go to the next we'll just go to the next one, Jean, and come back to you. Okay, so the next person is Doreen Moselin. Is, are you online, Doreen? Yes, I am. Oh, welcome. Oh, welcome. welcome yourself. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Doreen. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. Good um, evening. We're actually a team of outdoor bowlers who um, we've participated in the club champs at Otaki. And from there, we won we won that. And then we went on to win the champion of champions at the Kapiti um, 
Champion of Champions event. And this entitles us to participate in the um, national finals in Hastings, which is held over four days at the end of July. So what we're doing, we're actually looking for, um, we're doing fundraising to cover the costs of travel and accommodation and um, would really like the board to give our application some consideration. I know um, I've probably uh, sussed out most of what it is that we, we need. Um, I'm getting a little bit tongue-tied here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, we've been doing a lot of fundraising and unfortunately some of our targets haven't really reached what we expected, although we still have a dinner to come up in the next couple of weeks. We've got a, um, a dinner coming up, but because of COVID, our numbers have been reduced somewhat. And so we're not getting as much um, support as what we would like to have. But I'm happy to um, answer any questions. I think basically I've, I've outlined most of what our requirements are. Mm. No, your, your, um, your application was very full, which was really good. Um, and congratulations on, on winning the, the competition. It's, it's, it's great. So we just keep turning out these good sports people in old tacky, young and, yeah. and, and the more, the little older people, you know, so there's, <laughs> well, no, there's, no, there's no age gap, you know, when it comes to actually being good at, being good at the sport. It's, it's wonderful yeah. to see. It was so, really quite an achievement because it's 38 years since um, Otaki has won this competition. Wow. Oh, that, that's that's really something to pat yourselves on the back for. Yeah, um, we think so. Yeah, absolutely. Now, does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask Doreen? No? No head's shaking? Yeah, Cam does. Cam. Okay. So, oh, Doreen, how do you think you're going to go in the competition? Well, we we can only be positive and put our best foot forward. And we have got some very good players in the team. And we, do, we just can only put our best foot forward. We've got as good a chance as anybody else. Well, best of luck. Great. Yeah, best of luck. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Okay. Well, no one else has any more questions? Well, thank you very much, Doreen. And... Um... As I say, same with you, you can stay or, or depart, whichever suits you. Samara will be in touch with you in regards to your grant application. Thank you. And, uh, and really good luck to you guys. It's really great to see. Thank you. Thank you for, for listening to us. You're welcome. Okay. Right. Samara, who's next in line? So we've got what we're going to do, Jean, if you can hear us, Fiona, who um, works with me, is going to give you a call on your cell phone and you can come on to the call via your cell phone. So she's just going to try and set that up for you so you can speak. So we'll go on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on to the next person. Um, so the next pers person is Megan Bolton from the Central Canoe Polo Association. Welcome, Megan. You need to be unmuted as well. Now. Thank you very much. Um, and good evening to everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to um, speak to our application. Um, I'm with the Central Canoe Polo Association. Um, Central is one of the five regions within oh. New Zealand Canoe Polo. Um, am I unmuted? I've just muted the person that was unmuted, so continue on. Oh. Uh, one of the five regions within New Zealand Canoe Polo and our area runs from Taranaki down to Wellington incorporating Wairarapa on the way through so um, and Otaki is one of those one of those clubs. Um, every year we hold a development camp which is for our younger players and this is this camp underpins our, our pathway to success virtually in, in Central. Um, we have got this plan for the 2nd and 3rd of July at the Otaki Pool, uh, where they will be transported. We hire vans um, in New Plymouth and Palmerston, and they're transported down here. Uh, they're accommodated and fed at Forest Lakes um, Camp, 
and then they have um, off water and on water uh, programs at, at the Wataki Pool. Uh, we have six um, volunteer coaches, three or four of them are in the current New Zealand team, so they offer really good advice and uh, good um, role models for these young children. And it, that's what we do within the within the pool area. So with the age, I think the youngest we have coming this on the second and third of July, thirteen, and I'm not sure how how old they go up to, but we have um, three from the Otaki area, and I think they were part of the um, team that won the D grade competition within the New Zealand Canoe Polo National League. So, so they're doing really well. Um, but this is part of a very important part of our our development. We need. We need to develop these players, obviously, and if they are, um, I guess, good enough, then they will be invited to the in-house competition, which is the next level up, where they do a similar sort of thing, but it's more about a round-robin tournament. Um, and, yeah, so that's kind of the, the basis of it, very short and sweet, um, but quite happy to answer any questions that um, maybe Cameron's got for me. Why did you think I have a question for you? Well, I don't know. I just thought you might like to. <laughs> does, any, does anybody have any questions? Well, actually, I have. <laughs> um, I just wanted to check, Megan, on the income side of things. There's entry fees of $1,000 put there. Um, yep. I thought that was quite a bit higher than that with um, how yes. much the kids are getting charged. That was that was kind of an, an initial starting point for me because... <laughs> If I put, you know, that we're getting seven thousand dollars and we end up with three, we're not. We actually have thirty-six players coming, and they are charged uh, two hundred dollars each. So that's obviously income of seven thousand two hundred. Um, but our outgoings are are about that. So we're on about a break even at the moment. Our um, um, costs at Forest Lakes are three thousand two hundred dollars for the for the night and for three meals. So yeah, so our our um, the income we get from these players it virtually is just covering the costs. Okay, so if if, um, if um, Central received funding from the community board, would that reduce the entry fee for the participants? Probably? No, it, it won't reduce it at this stage, but it will probably reduce it in future years. Well, like we haven't put those fees up for probably about seven or eight years. So we like to kind of keep it as low as possible, but obviously because the costs are increasing across the board, that's, that makes it a bit tricky, but it just gives us a little bit of, I guess, a little bit of fat in it um, so that we can maybe buy purchase balls or, you know, some other equipment to go towards this. So, and we're not making money of it, so to speak, but it's, it just makes it a little bit easier for next time that we know we can cover these costs at that price. Well, thanks, me. No, th thanks. Marilyn. Hi, Megan. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm just, it's quite an exciting program, actually, but I'm just interested, have you applied to any of the other community boards for grants, or have you got any other grants coming from any other places? Um, I've applied for a grants for travel from Palmerston North to Otaki, uh, <coughs> and higher, and I've applied for balls as well, and because, it, because the, we actually had it a different date and the dates changed we've that's been brought up a bit so I haven't actually had enough time to do um other other um, major fund um grant applications you know you need you need a good three months really to kind of get the get get a good grant application and um but I have because these the dates changed it's been a bit tricky so but I have applied for um one van sorry van transport from Osaki um but not from New Plymouth and I haven't applied for the accommodation, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Samara, Samara, as I said to you, Samara will be in touch. Thank you very much. I'm the popular you. person tomorrow. You are. You are Samara. <laughs> will be. Um, next Quite person on the list is Danny Sargent, who's from the Wellington Wrestling Association. Uh, kia ora everybody, thank you for having me. Um, so my name's Danny. I'm from the Wellington Wrestling Association. So we are a collaboration of the three Lower North Island clubs. So Featherston Amateur Wrestling Club, Tawa and Linden Wrestling Club and Waikanae Wrestling Clubs. Um, so we are holding Wellington New Zealand Championships this weekend on Saturday um, at Ngā Putaputa um, Gym 
or stadium. Uh, and so I'm seeking $500 to support and payment for that. The total payment is eleven fifty. Um, and so we have decided to collaborate as our three clubs. This is the first time in probably 25 years that a New Zealand tournament has been run in the Lower North Island. We always have to travel, um, which is really funny because most of our Commonwealth champion medalists have come from the Lower North Island region, just about all of them, um, over the past 20, maybe 30 years. Um, so we uh, have a training camp on the Sunday. So there is an expectation that people coming outside of the region from the other 22 clubs in New Zealand uh, will be staying the night to attend that training camp. So we've got our top, top wrestlers coming to run the training camp on the Sunday. So people will be required to stay the night. At the moment from between our three clubs, Wellington Wrestling Association has 150 registered wrestlers, uh, financial wrestlers. Um, and from the Waikanae Club, most, uh, some of them reside in Ōtaki, which is the reason for our application. Um, and from outside of the Wellington Wrestling Association, we currently only have roughly 35 yesterday when I checked registrations uh, from outside of the area who are coming to the tournament, but that's not entirely unusual. We normally get a big rush the night before and then we also get new weigh-ins on the morning before so we have it uh yeah the morning before we wrestle so we have an expectation that we will have at least 150 other wrestlers from outside of the region aged five five years um open to it's open age but it's normally five to 21 years um with an, a range of weight groups um, the, there's a cost of $20 per wrestler to wrestle, depending on which how many uh, wrestling weight categories you go into, um, but it's at least $20 that's passed on to the competing wrestlers. Um, and I think that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just, I'm just just looking at your grant application here. Are you doing any sort of fundraising or have you got any funds from anywhere else? Because you put nothing in the income. Uh, no, yeah. So we are. So Wellington Wrestling Association is brand new. It's only just been um, started this year over the last couple of months because we're all three really small clubs and we don't have a lot of capacity to do the the administration portion. So we thought it would be a good idea to collaborate. We haven't. I have applied to regional public health um, for some funding to support that our, our biggest cost is actually supplying the medals which come at roughly five and a half thousand dollars um for all the medals so i've applied to regional public health for that um and i don't find out uh if we get that until next week um which will be after the event but apart from that it's just independent club fundraising so bake sales and raffles um i think tower have had just over the last week and a half, some other fundraising that they've done. We haven't haven't had a meeting yet. We've got one tonight. Okay, thank you. Now, Marilyn, were you waving your hand around to ask a question? Yes, I was, but you you covered what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Okay, Darling, thank, thank, thank you very, very much for your application and, and we will be in touch. Cool. Thanks, guys. Paul Marie. Okay. okay, bye. But do we have? Um, I think we may have, have Jane, Jane via phone. Jane? <laughs> I think we may have her via phone. Fiona's hopefully helped tee that up. Hi, Jean. I'm unmuted. Oh, well done. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> On the phone. <laughs> well done. Jean, you might just need to That's mute. It's very hard um, for old people to do this. <laughs> Okay. 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 Uh, what what it's okay. doing is um, reverberating yeah. through my um, um, my my computer now. Computer now. What I'll do is I'll take you into the waiting room, and we'll just hear from you by phone. Okay, just one moment. That should have okay. fixed it. Hopefully, that might you be think? better. Yes. Oh, yes. Jean, we all know what you look like anyway. <laughs> okay. 
Um, in the, in the, my travels around New Zealand with Tom, uh, we used to go to a lot of the uh, memorials that are throughout New Zealand and all the small towns that would um, have uh, would would acknowledge the people who served in the First World War and the Second World War. And of course, we have got one in Otaki. Also on our travels, we noticed that um, some of the memorials acknowledged the fact that um, we have been involved in military engagements since then, uh, or New Zealand has in Borneo and Vietnam, et cetera, et cetera. But there is no acknowledgement on our memorial. So I would like, uh, on behalf of the welfare team, to have inscribed on our war memorial, cenotaph, whatever you like to call it. Um, where is that? Remember with pride, those who have served and those who have died in post-World War II military actions in Korea, Malaya, Bosnia, Bosnia Vietnam, and in peacekeeping forces for the United nations military actions lest we forget and we would have that engraved on it rather than a plaque uh, and it would be in keeping with what is already there yeah well that, that, that um, sounds re really good jane it's a community thing really it's a it's it's just an rsa initiative but really it's a community thing and it was interesting when i applied to the council originally about this um, to find out uh, how I would go about it. Um, they didn't actually acknowledge that they owned it. So I had um, my neighbour next door um, went right back through the papers past and found where the land and the Plunkett rooms, restrooms was gifted to the council in 1930. So we, the council actually does own that. Um, memorial. Oh gosh, you just well, told me something <laughs> I didn't it, know as well. Well, yeah. I think um, it would be a very good thing if they actually went um, throughout the district and acknowledged all those memorials and when they were gifted, because there are other councils who have them all listed, mm. and ours doesn't. Mm. Anyway, that's besides the point. No, no, that's that's very, very good. Well, I th I think it's um it's very important that that the the other generations are acknowledged for, for their contribution to to society and, and to and to the yes. conflict that we've had. And bearing in yes. mind we've now got that that horrid one over in, in Ukraine. Ukraine. It's yeah. just yeah, it's yeah. just yeah, you know, and so and that's that's bringing it really really to the forefront for. A, for a lot of us, and I think to our children as well, who are obviously seeing this on TV and and um, probably realizing what what war is all about, and it's not an, it's not a nice experience. So, no. so that, that's it's, really it's great. an acknowledgement, an acknowledgement yeah, yeah, that, of that's oh, right, yeah, for people that have, have given their lives and and yeah, um, or I'll serve, yes, yeah, uh, and the idea would be that um, we would sort of unveil that on the um, 11th of November, which is really appropriate. Oh, yes. That'd be wonderful. Does anybody, Marilyn, yeah. Cam, do you have any questions? No, Marilyn? Just a comment. What a great thing you're doing, Jane. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and well, you can't see me when I'm grinning, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. I can Jane. hear it in your voice. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, and, thank you. And, and Samara will be in touch. She's going to be a busy girl okay, tomorrow. Thank, <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Okay, bye. 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 We've, we've got two more on the list. The next person um, is Sheila Hart from Cobbler's Soup Lunch, just to um, say thank you. Oh. Where is she? Is she there? Are you there, Sheila? Yeah. She's still a golf ball. Oh, now she disappeared. Are you there, Sheila?
Nein. Ich schreibe es an mute and she is unmuted um but we're not getting any sound coming through oh, oh there we go we can see her we can see her no we can't hear her either <laughs> hello it sheila to be a difficulty with um the devices being used with the microphones i believe Do you want to go and um, Marilyn was going to talk on, I think, um, just in regards to a grant application. Thank you. So would, do you want to go to Marilyn first while we're just trying to sort out Sheila? That'd be good. Okay, Marilyn. Yeah, so I just want to um, thank you for the um, money, well, the rental of the Gertrude Atmore supper room for the last... Um, how long is it, Samara? Two years, maybe. Um, we do get a grant usually each year to hold the community network forum once a month in the Gertrude Atmore supper rooms. And that's a, an amazing networking forum for the people in providing services in our town in OTAC. So we have lots of different services that come and have the opportunity to network once a month. Unfortunately, over the last couple of years, we haven't had too many face-to-face -face meetings. We've been doing via Zoom or not at all. So um, hopefully we don't have to give back any of the money that we've, that we've received because the meetings are going to continue. They're going on and they're really worthwhile. So thank you. Um, and with grant applications, yeah. um, for Thanks, example, Marilyn. with that, um, just to let you know the board that we we do have lenience around COVID. So um, obviously a lot of meeting with meetings have been cancelled face to face. So that will just sit there, but we will keep in touch um, around that grant just for accountability purposes. And, and thanks, Marilyn. You do a splendid job for the board attending those meetings. And, and it's very, very valuable to the board, the feedback you actually bring back to us. So it's much appreciated by the rest of the board members and by myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. It, it's, a, it's a nice feeling to feel like you're actually doing something in the community. Yeah. That's helpful. So, yeah, thank you. Right. You certainly are. Thank you. Right. Have we managed to get Sheila connected yet or? Um, Sheila, can you try and speak <laughs> just to sit here if we can? She's asleep in her armchair, by the way. <laughs> oh, we're not that boring, surely. <laughs> the other suggestion I have um, for Sheila is possibly to leave the meeting and come back in. Sometimes that can resolve sound issues as well. Okay, Sheila, you can you can do that if, if you wish to if you wish to come back or. You could perhaps come to the next meeting, at, which should be a face to face, which might be a little bit more convenient, or you can try again. It's, it's totally up to you. Just to note that Sheila has provided an accountability yeah. report back um, form as well. Yeah, she just it. wanted to come online and yeah. say thank you. So, um, whatever she decides, if she can hear us. So, what would you like to do, Sheila? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can, can hear us. No. So, can I just speak? about Sheila and the service that she provides. Am I allowed to do that? Of course you can. Well, I want to thank Sheila and her team for everything they do for the people of Oteki, the lonely people that need company over lunch or, or whatever their reason for going on a Thursday to have lunch down at, down at the Memorial Hall or Gertrude Atmore. You do an amazing service and I want to thank you on behalf of the community because you're filling a whole lot of people's needs and it's, it's awesome to see. And, and Sheila and her husband, Tony, actually deliver soap to those people that can't get to the hall to, to get it as well. So good on you. Thanks, She. Mm, yes, and I confirm that as well. You're, you're doing a wonderful job. You're not just filling their tummies, you're filling other aspects of their life as well, which is wonderful to see. Right. Well, where are we up to now? So this is getting very confusing. We're so so if you're happy, um, Chris, that concludes yeah. the public speaking time. Okay. Um, if you're happy, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the end of the public. So, okay, finishes the public speaking time.
So just to let you know, we have the, um, the um, uh, people present for the Takutai Kapiti update, so you can choose okay. to do that now or well, that after the are, meeting. Yeah, because yeah. we okay. do have them online. Okay, well, let's, um, we'll just get rid of leave of absence and matters of an urgent nature yep. because they'd probably just be tick, tick off. So yep. has anybody got a leave of absence coming up? No, okay, that's done. And any matters of an urgent nature, guys? Okay, so we've got rid of those. Okay, there we go. So that was easy. Okay, so we'll we'll do that the update and from the coastal advisory panel. Who's user seven six zero eight four eight? I'm not sure, but we've got we've got Lindsay, uh, one of our public speakers. Okay, Chris, we've got Lindsay online from she's one of our council staff and she will introduce um, the panel. To, okay, to us. Kia Kia ora tata o tiri fano o otaki. Ko Lindsay Craig ho kai fai kai o taktai o kanahera. Kia ora, I'm Lindsay. I'm the council manager for Kapiti Council. We um, have got a wee presentation for you this evening. Um, I will be speaking very briefly to give you a project update, but the main purpose of this is to introduce the Coastal Advisory Group, of which Mr Jim Baldrew is chair, so he will be doing the majority of the speaking. We've got a wee presentation we're going to share with you, which hopefully will work. Um, here we go. So I'm just going to speak to that as an, by way of introduction, and then I'll hand over to Jim if that's okay. Can everybody see my screen? Cap on. Okay, so I'm just going to give you um, an overview of where the project is at, and then Jim will obviously talk to the work that the group's doing, and then we would really like any questions that you may have for us um, at the end of that. So um, the Takatai project team, so what we're up to is the first two volumes of the Jacobs report has been released and are available to the public. So volume one being the methodology report, Volume two being the hazards and vulnerability assessment. Work has currently started um, on the next part of the work from Jacobs, which is uh, will lead into the more risk assessment side of it and the decision making uh, framework that the panel will be working through to look at how we um, find solutions to, to living with uh, adapting to uh, impacts on our coastline. And the important parts of those uh, of that next piece of work is there's several different components that come together. One of those is the work of the group themselves trying to get out there and talk to the community and, and hear the voice of the community. There's a social impact assessment, which we have commissioned a, a group of consultants called Maven, and they're currently going out and about in the community having targeted interviews um, to have an independent view of of what uh, the community has to say around what's happening on the coastline so we certainly encourage people to um, get involved with that and we'll we'll give you information on how you can get in touch with us if, you, if you're interested we've also got a cultural values assessment that is being carried out by Dr Araha Sphinx along with Lindsay Potama and Moira Potama and some other work around ecology space and the natural character work. And basically all these more uh, very important values-based assessments, they're fed into uh, the decision-making alongside the legislative and policy-based frameworks that we have to work within. Since the reports were released, we've put together some videos and area-specific information sheets. So uh, this information, the technical side of things, is quite hard to digest. So we felt that putting some easy access videos and, and, and bite-size uh, sheets of information would be a good way to, to hopefully uh, give people information in a, an easier, digestible way. We've also put out a GIS viewer, so people can literally jump online and have a wee look at uh, their area of the coastline as it affects them, if they so wish, and, and what the assessment is saying. We've established a technical advisory group, and that is made up of uh, those various consultants that I've just mentioned, alongside people like Greater Wellington Regional Council, to uh, make sure that we meet monthly to ensure that we're all sort of talking together and discussing uh, our approach to advising this, uh, this group uh, of community members and EWI representatives on uh, the impacts on our coastline and, and what potential solutions they may look at, which is a, 
a smorgasbord of options that, that, that may be available depending where we are in the community. So we've established the advisory group. So they finalise the terms of reference. They've started identifying the areas of work. Um, so they're going to be working from Otaki downwards and looking at the decision making framework as long as as long alongside the other uh, like I mentioned earlier, legal and policy frameworks they need to look within. But the really uh, exciting part is they're starting to have a conversation with the community. They've had a one or two uh, drop in sessions and we will be talking to the other opportunities for people to, to come and talk to the to the group and, and get the feedback across. So just to give you a reminder of what the panel is. So the panel is an independently appointed group of community members. They will act as the voice of the community in our response to coastal hazards. They aren't there to provide technical expertise, but will be uh, guided through the through the process by technical experts. They're independent of, but supported by us as council. And of course, they have to be operating within those legal and uh, policy restraints. I'm sure we're all aware that we're still waiting patiently for greater national guidance on this on this issue. But um, time and tide does not wait. So we're, we're, we're carrying on with the work. Um, I'm going to uh, move on quickly to allow Jim to speak, because the whole purpose of this is, is for them to, to be able to speak to you directly. But by all means, I will be uh, still here to answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Jim, are you there to, to speak to this now, next part of the presentation? Hopefully. Can you hear me now? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, all right, Jim, we can hear you. So just carry on. We're all muted, so you ah. don't get any background noise. I see. So well, I, we were muted before. Thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you to the community board for... Uh, uh, giving us this opportunity to share some thoughts with you of what we're doing, how we'd like to engage with the community, how we would like you as a, a voice in the community to engage with us where necessary, appropriate or sensible. Um, Lindsay's just given you the outline of who we are, what we're doing. Our main task as we would see it is as the uh, panel is to listen to the community, listen to the expert advisors to council and eventually produce a report for the council. The council, of course, is the body that's elected by the community and they will make final judgments on whatever we suggest or what they develop in themselves. So we're part and parcel of the outreach and hence our discussion with you. We talked earlier this evening with the Waikanae Community Board and uh, now with you. We are out in the community. We've had meetings at uh, Parapara Umu and at Otaki the other day. We haven't been uh, overrun with uh, people wanting to come and talk to us yet, but I think it's early in the process. But we did believe that the uh, community board, their unique position in the community structure would be valuable for us to talk to and maybe you to talk to us. So I'm going to stop there and invite you to ask questions or you've got on the screen now where we're going to be meeting in the future. Lindsay's just put that up. Thanks, Lindsay. And, um, and they've been in the paper as well. So uh, if you want to come along or your friends are wanting to talk about coastal issues and they have a concern or they have an idea, well, then invite them to come along. And I'd have to say, in both Paraparaumu and in uh, in Otaki, we have had people come along with ideas as to what we might do differently or what Kapiti might do differently. And I say up front, my, uh, we arrived, Joe and I arrived in uh, Waikanae on the coast here uh, nearly 10 years ago. And uh, I sense just after the last attempt to develop a policy for coastal uh, hazards, um, yeah, went through the courts many times. You know all about it. I know about it. I think there is a concern in the community that something's going to go wrong again. Uh, we're trying to avoid that wherever, whatever way we can. Uh, and part of this outreach is designed to prevent things going wrong again. I use that broad generic term. Uh, the courts had a great deal of fun going over various things here on the Kapiti Coast which I'd have to say nobody else took any notice of at all other than those directly involved here on the coast. So I'll just stop there and uh, we'll uh, 
take your question, try and answer your questions, offer advice, you can offer us advice, etc. So Christine, thank you for allowing us to be part of your board meeting and um, allowing us to listen to some of the issues you have to deal with, I might say. Um, and um, no, it's over to you. Got any questions? Your board members got any questions? And now's the opportunity. Thank you very much. That was that was a very interesting presentation, and and no doubt there will be a lot of experts out there telling you how to do your job. No um, shortage of experts. <laughs> but can I just say, and you'll see on the screen, I've got Calvin Nixon here beside me. I see Don Day has come up there. Olivia is there as well. Jerry Mataparai doesn't have a photograph. Yes, he does now. He just surprised me. Uh, so um, we've got a big panel, big percentage of the panel are here on screen for you here at Otaki. Thank you very, very much. And, and as I say, thank you again for that fine presentation. Uh, do any of the other board members have any questions they would like to ask? Just a... Cam. An interesting comment. I was at a council meeting um, it was the risk and audit meeting and we had a particular lady from a, a group come along who does seem to be quite anti what um what the group is what your group is doing jim uh, mm. certainly trying to discredit the the jacobs report um and the I, I think there's a so i think there are long-standing opponents of them so that's You've the exposure that the i've had so far You've got the group called the Community Ratepayers Association, who yep, clearly were uh, negative towards the earlier attempt 10 years back. Uh, I went and spoke to their annual general meeting and uh, chatted to them afterwards. Um, they spend much of their time, I'll put it this way, to try and discredit the uh, technical advice that we get. But I have to say, as yet, have not offered alternative technical advice. <laughs> Yes, so that's good to hear. Um, so my question was, is from the meetings that you've had so far, um, how is the balance of sort of positive and negative feedback been so far? <laughs> oh, it's been positive. I mean, uh, Otaki, we had long discussions with uh, enthusiastic supporters of uh, June's being a way to protect the coast. And of course, one of our a panel members, uh, Susie Mills, is down on Fieldway here at Waikanae and is part of the Dune Restoration Grouping down there. So we get up close and personal advice on that. We had another uh, presentation in um, Paraparo Umu on different types of solid walls that could be used and might be ben much more beneficial than just a blank concrete or timber wall. Uh, so, no, we've had some good advice. And... Um, we had somebody else who was maybe not a professional advice. <laughs> oh yeah, we had someone else who was a qualified professional, and he was very skeptical about um, uh, these advisors that come in under contract to uh, talk to councils and that. And because he never did that, he did something else. So you know, you get all those sorts of uh, inherent <laughs> historic views on issues. But so far, we haven't been attacked, and I was very sorry to hear. Uh, Lindsay says she'd had some nasty emails in the last couple of days. Yeah, one, okay. of, one of the things I was actually, when I was campaigning for the community board two and a half years ago, mm. um, was just start again. Much, yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, from the Grey Power point of view, just how actively engaged some of the Grey Power people were with climate change and the like, um, which was actually fantastic to see. Well, a lot of the Grey Power members are possibly closer to the coast than some of the others. I don't know. It's a, it's a thought. I mean, clearly the people who are closer to the coast are more concerned as a generality than those you know, on the other side of the railway line, to use a broad description. Uh, and, of course, at Otaki, uh, once you come in from the coast, you have the big, large, low-lying level of former swampland, which... Um, you know, it's a bit low lying. If the tide comes in, according to the experts, not tomorrow, but in due course. Mm. Yeah, and true. We've had some, um, I think, quite positive uh, interactions today, which I think is um, something that we it keeps us going in, in what is very a very difficult conversation to have with our communities. And I think that um, it's great having our advisory panel able to have that um, ability to speak directly to the community and, and hear that feedback. Uh, I don't think we can avoid having 
a realistic conversation about what we do along our coastline without having those difficult conversations. Um, and we're here to sort of come and speak to as many people as possible to say, we want to hear from you as, as difficult as it may be to hear those conversations. If we don't have them, we're not doing justice to this, to this project. Um, and one of the things that we would like and encourage you as a community board to do is if anybody's coming to you with any questions, please put them in my or, or the CAPS way, uh, direct them to us to, to be able to speak to us directly. We, uh, but we do encourage constructive feedback, constructive conversations. As Jim um, mentioned, there has been uh, some unpleasant interactions and um, we're all human beings, we're all members of this mm. community and we all want to do the best we can for it. So. Um, let's let's move forward in that kind of vein would be great <laughs> yeah. thanks lindsay you're absolutely right uh we're here for a short time to try and help i'm just going to pause the chair and see whether any other member of the panel wants to add anything to what i have just said i'm looking particularly at olivia who's the youngest one on the whole exercise and see whether the youth voice has a, a view you'd like to put forward how about that olivia no pressure, Jim. <laughs> None at all. <laughs> None at all. I, I think I just have to echo the sentiment of the rest of the panel. Um, I mean, I can't speak for, for all of the youth of Carpety, but I know that there are a lot of um, people in my age group that are really, really passionate about the environment and climate issues in particular. Um, and I know that like my cohort particularly has had a huge focus on that coming through high school as well. Um, so I'd say just as much as anyone that we're, we're here, we're listening. Um, I look forward to being able to engage, hopefully, with some of the youth in Ōtaki. That would be really cool. Um, but yeah, just excited about this process and, and here to listen along with everyone else. Thanks. Thanks, Olivia. Yes, yeah, it'd be wonderful if young people want to engage, want to engage with you, uh, the rest of us as well. But I mean, the youth perspective, it was the council decided correctly, in my view, they wanted to have a broad base for the CAP membership, including a youth voice or voices. And uh, that's happening. Thanks, Olivia. Anybody else Thanks, want sir. to read? Thank, well, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, team. That, that's, that's really, that's really good. Now, as far as these um, public or meetings that you're going to have at markets and things, are you, are you advertising all that through local papers and everything, or is it just going to be a word of mouth thing? You are putting it, the word out there that yeah. you are going to be at these places. Lindsay? Yeah, so we've put out um, in local media, we've put um, we've put press releases out, we've put advertisements out, it's on social media. We've set up a platform called Have Your Say, which is a council-based platform We've got newsletters that people could sign up for, and we've got the independent Takatai Carpety website. More than happy to share any of those links around the board if that's help with you when you're out and about speaking to the community. Because mm. um, look, not everyone reads the newspapers and not everyone uses social media. So, you know, if there's any way that, that people are asking you, why, why do we not know about these things? Um, please point them in our direction and we'll, we'll do everything we can to, to uh, involve them. That would be very, very helpful to have link have links to it. Um, sure will. I mean, we're, we're pretty lucky in Ortega. We've got two local papers, and I think they're pretty widely read. So, um, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. You know, the Ortega so community much. is brilliant. I mean, it's 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 really got so many avenues that uh, the community gets together and, and and has a conversation. So we're quite excited to be starting mm. the work up there. Yeah, I nice. might add. Might add. We have, of course invited iwi to be on the board and some of them are on the cap board as well cap panel uh and there's still one or two more to be appointed so we want to make certain that we'll have engagement with iwi who've been on the coast longer than any of us and um they are coming on board and they will be bringing perspective and one of the issues we're looking at and one of the surveys is the cultural that lindsay spoke to the cultural assessment of the region etc trying to get that overarching full picture really of who we are and oh, what we're we going to do with uh, what is inevitable climate change. I think everybody in the professional world of climate science would say that the oceans are going to rise. It's too late to stop that now. It's really a question of how far, how fast, and that's the debate that's going on all around the world, but it will happen. And um, we have to start preparing as best we can. Yes, well, thank you very much. And thank you for all the hard work that, that your team's putting in. 
Thank you. Um, and if there's no further questions. Chair. Marilyn, do you have something? There's a couple of hands up. Yeah, yeah okay. Pam, Marilyn. Oh, I've already spoken. Uh, I've got a question, but Marilyn, you go, because I've already had my oh, first question. Oh, thank you. I was just going to say thanks very much, Jim, and thanks to your team. I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity. Um, the community network forum that I spoke of before, where people providing any kind of a, a service to Otaki can come and network. It's on the first Tuesday of every month at 9.30 a.m. at the <coughs> supper rooms. And if you had somebody that was available to come and speak to that network, that would be really cool. I'm sure we can arrange that. If you make contact with Lindsay uh, and her team, and we'll identify one or other of the CAP team that can go along and chat. Yes, I'm sure that's possible. Thank you. Lindsay, can you put your contact details in the chat, please? Just done it. Oh, good on you. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. And that, that group is a word of mouth group too. So, I mean, that, that nothing gets around this town quicker than... <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, surprise. You don't say they gossip by any chance. <laughs> no, not gossip. No, no, oh, it's word of mouth, not stuff. gossip. It's all factual. No, look, gossip. I'm very pleased to draw the distinction. Yeah, no, I'll put, absolutely. I'll put my email address up on the so the whole chat can see. More than welcome to you to, to email me. So I'll do that oh, now. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Right, Cam, you had something else? Yes, indeed. Um, question for Olivia. Um, so in terms of trying to look at the, the youth perspective, um, are you planning to go into, say, Otaki College and have a chat with some of their senior um, students there? I'd love to if I get the chance. Um, I haven't been in contact with Otaki yet just because I'm based in Ramathi, so I've personally started my connections there. Um, I know that Mavens, that our um, social impact assessment people, have been holding some conversations um, with youth in the Otaki area. But if you have any contact details for them, I would really love to yeah. be able to have a chat or if you knew anyone who did have those details. Just just oh, ring Andy Fraser. Andy, Andy Fraser. Yeah. Just I Andy just Fraser. I took yeah. Andy's Andy name. Fraser is the principal. Yeah. He is he was they're, um, they're just, speaking. Well they just they've just applied for a grant to rather substantial for um restoring one of the streams and everything. And yeah. so these mm. these these kids are really are really into that sort of thing. So and you know, grab them while they're young and um you've got yeah. them for life. <laughs> funny enough, oh, I just I just here. I just messaged Andy when I saw his presentation. I got very excited that there was that um, there was that linkage there. So that's great. And also, um, the Kura, uh, principal of the Kura in Otaki is actually on the uh, on the assessment panel as well. So um, we have got some work trying to uh, involve Rangatahi in, in Otaki. If anyone's got any uh, suggestions really open to it. It'd be great to have that, that youth voice involved. I, I think your, fir your first port of call is, is Andy because he's got all the contacts. Fab. And he will certainly be able to point you in the right direction. Great. Lin great. Lindsay, I've got his contact details. Already. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Jerry or Don, do you want to add anything to the discussion? Hmm? Don's shaking his head. Jerry's shaking his head as well. No. There you well, go. That Thinking your meeting's going quite a long time, Christina. I think no, no, oh, no, no. This is this isn't too bad yet. We've had longer, <laughs> um, but no. Thank you very, very much for for coming along and and giving up your your evening for us. It's been very interesting, interesting, and most beneficial, I'm sure. And um, I'm sure you'll get a lot of a lot of people from Otaki with opinions and suggestions. <laughs> you, you, you speak with the word of voice of experience, people in Otaki with opinions, yes. Oh, how surprising, how surprising. Well, on that, of course, we have um, carved the coast up a little bit in terms of different uh, risk profiles that they have. And we're starting at the north, we're starting at Otaki because the risk profile is lower there. You should all be pleased to hear that. Oh, that's good. That's right. Then further south, we'd look. Uh, you'd want to be buying your canoe now. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't Tihara tell them I said that. <laughs> recent storms. <laughs> they said, yeah. "Don't tell them I said that." But uh, no, there is a dis there's quite a distinction in terms of risk, in terms of inundation of that from the north to the south. There's a, a generic scene. It's not exactly that way, but that's what it is. So our first focus is going to be on the north, and uh, then move down to the Cavity Coastal area. Mm. Mm. And um, I, um, I have talked to the Minister of uh, Climate Change, James Shaw, 
went and saw him with uh, another member, Martin Manning, who's a climate scientist, to see whether, in fact, what we're doing would be absorbed eventually into a, a global New Zealand way or approach so that uh, we weren't trying to make artificial barriers on council boundaries. He seemed interested, but whether he will make any steps in that direction, I don't know. But it seems to me a little a little foolish to believe that each council can find a solution and you know, the different solution next door across a line in the map and oceans don't read maps. So as I've told many audiences, they come when they come, where they come. So we'll see whether the government changes policy or direction or any of this, but that's for the future. Yeah. Marilyn, have you got your hand up? Oh, because there was a little blue <laughs> hand. <laughs> Must have been earlier. Hasn't Must come down yet. Well, oh, thank, thank you. Again. Yeah, Th thank you very much again, gentlemen and and ladies and the whole. I can only see a couple of you on screen. That's the that's the, the downfall of these meetings on Zoom. There's only nine little squares, so you don't Great. actually see every everybody at once, which is a shame. So, but, but thanks once again, and um, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. And yeah. hopefully, some of we will come to some of your meetings. Oh, I'm sure. Fabulous. I'm sure they will. Thanks, Christine, and the board members uh, for giving us the time this evening to chat to you. And can I say thank thanks you, to the panel members who are here as well. And Lindsay, thank you and Elizabeth and so forth for giving up your evening to be part of this as well. So thank you all and have thank a good you. evening. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Pomarie. 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 Right. We'll move on with a second. We'll just see who we've got. So who have we got left in the... So we've still got Jean. User 760848, whoever that person is. I think that's Doreen. It's what? I think it's Doreen. Oh, is it? Mm. Okay. Right. Now, what's the next bit? Okay, we're up to, according to my, the consideration for the grants. Um, Chris, can I just start off yeah. just to um, just give the board a few um, updates around the yeah, grants? Oh, be good. Yeah. So over um, the last month, uh, Friends of the Otaki Rotunda um, got a grant last year and weren't able to spend it. So they have refunded it. Um, and the grant tonight is out of the 12 month time period. But I just wanted to draw your attention that um, I think it was around $1,200 to $1,300 has gone back in. Yep. Um, to the grants pool. Um, we also had another event that wasn't going to continue, which was the Father's Day event from Kids Needs Dad. Um, so they will refund their money, but it can't be included in this financial year because we haven't received it. So that um, if we do get it in June, um, it'll just go back in. But if we receive it in July, it will get put back into um, the financial amount for the 2022-23 year. Okay, well, thank you very much for that, Samara. Um, okay, so how do we want to do, we, do what we want to do them individually? I really feel we just need a little bit of discussion on a couple of them. We've um, we've had our, our pre-board meeting where we did go through it all because it was quite a complex issue this time. Uh, do either Marilyn, you or Cam have anything else you would like to add or now we've got, we will have a little bit of surplus. I was actually re-looking really at the surf club one and I was wondering if perhaps you're in agreement to give them a little bit more. They um, perhaps just round it up to the, the, the next. I'm very happy with that. They do a great job in <laughs> yeah. our community. And so they, they, they want 2280 and I was wondering if we just round it up to the three. So, Chris, just to let you know, while we're talking, I do have a document on my screen that can total the numbers. So um, oh, cool. I can give oh, you cool. amounts. Um, if you let me know what you want to um, uh, put for each, and then I can let you know how much is, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, are we still in agreement with the canoe polo and the Wellington wrestling? as to what we had agreed previous. Yeah, yeah, I was actually, yeah. to be honest, I, I was actually disappointed that the, the figures that were put forward for the canoe polo thing were actually not yeah. correct. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's and almost almost dug themselves into a hole there, the saying yeah, that they had I, much more income. Yes, they had more yes. costs, but those costs weren't listed. No, um, and I just and I just feel that um, with the the wrestling one, they they're asking if they'd actually come and ask for some help towards the medals, that might have been a totally different different scenario. But but they're wanting funding for for the rental of Napurapura. And um, we just don't do that. So yeah. it's um, we've we've had people have applications for that before for rental of Napurapura, and we've said no. So we can't now go back and and agree to do it this time. Yeah, and there's so, certainly no Otaki Wrestling Club. No, well, no, they only no, had there a couple isn't. of members, didn't they? Yeah, this area. Mm, that's right. And they have and, applied for other grants, and that wasn't really very <laughs> transparent on their no on their. Formers, no, well, there's nothing, you know. So, so yeah, yeah, yep. So, I'm happy. Uh, okay. While I will be abstaining, okay. From the so, we'll work. take, yeah, well, I'll be abstaining from the one for um, for um, the friends of the rotunda. Okay, so if I, I work through the list that I've got in front of me that I sent out to you guys this afternoon, that financials list that um, Samara sent that I put the, the new amounts yep. on, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so we've got the Otaki College one. Um, would Marilyn, so we've got seven five for them. Would one of you like to move? Well, I might do that because then I can't do the I can't do the friends of the Otaki Rotunda. So I'll move that we give the Otaki College for the, the stream restoration seven thousand five hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah. Can I have I a second for that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All in favour? Any discussion? No. Nope. No. Okay. Done. Like. And I think with them, there's plenty of opportunity because it's a multi-year project to actually. Well, that's chat right. To us I think. Yeah, I think it's, it's going to it's going to be ongoing, and I'm sure, as I say, Andy, when we mentioned Max, I'm sure he, they are going to get a lot of help and support from friends of the Ongtaki River as well, um, because they they started from scratch and, and look at the marvelous job they've been doing. So. Oh. We can be friends of the Ongtaki Rivers. Yeah. yeah. Chris, can we please can we please just note for the record, just while it's being recorded, yeah. that um because this is the last meeting yeah. of the financial year, um normally you do get a maximum per mm. of five hundred dollars per grant, yeah. um but because um the funds if we don't spend them tonight they we don't they won't carry over, um, um that's up to the board's discretion on um increasing the okay. amount. Would, would you like me to say that or are you having said it as sufficient? Oh, you can just say, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that, that is perfectly yes. correct, yeah. Samara. And thank you very much to, for bringing it all back to our attention. <laughs> we tend to we tend to forget that because we know it and, and it's being recorded that the other people don't people that are that actually listen to the recording don't actually know what yeah. we're what we've done in the background. Yeah. So we need to be a little bit more transparent in that regard. Okay, we've got the Friends of the Old Tacky Rotunda. So we've got a thousand there. Would somebody like to move that or? I will. Thank you, Marilyn. I'll second that. That's second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's two people. Thank you. <laughs> 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 okay, the Otaki RSA welfare team. The full amount that they've requested is $862.50. Absolutely, um, no, yeah, problem absolutely with that. no problem. Yeah, absolutely no problem. That's a great I'll, idea. Marilyn, you move it. I'll second yeah. it. Yeah. No discussion. I'll play it. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's it done. Now the the combined schools. Do we want to leave that at five hundred? Five hundred each for so. that. Yeah. yeah. And that's I the full so. two thousand. Yeah, that's so right. So so that's two thousand dollars to the old tacky combined schools. Oh, five hundred for each school. Back to that, Chris. Uh, have we got extra funds? Because um, we, I know we we possibly, well, should we hold on to that? Should we hold on to that till the end? Yeah, we'll, given, we'll hold that one to the end. Given the story that we yeah. have tonight, I'm, I I know. Yeah. Okay, we'll hold we'll hold that one back until we've done a total at the end, eh? All right. Mm. Yep. Okay, then uh, the Otaki Surf Life Saving Club. Now they've requested two thousand two hundred and eighty, but after hearing Neil and actually looking through the application again. They possibly need quite a lot more equipment. They do do a terrific oh, job of looking, yeah. looking after everybody on the beach. And, um, and also it's, it's keeping kids doing things as well that are beneficial. Okay. They're, they're learning how to save lives, not take oh. them. 
you know, so it's it's just I think it's just a wonderful cause. So so, I. so I I you know, I propose we up that to three three grand for them. And if I have a seconder for that, that would be most appreciated. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and, I would also like to say that thanks to also KCDC, the Otaki Kite Festival will be going ahead next year. Oh, great. Fantastic. Yay. And that'll be helping the surf club out with some fundraising as well. Okay. And the, the wonderful bowling ladies that have qualified for this tournament, haven't they done a good job? Now, we had a discussion on that and we decided we'd fund them for their accommodation, which was $1,440. Yeah, and I, I think that's still relevant because that's mm. you know, a, a fixed cost for them. Yeah. Um, travel, bits and pieces, meals, those are open to interpretation mm. and a mm. little bit of yeah. flux. So yeah. I think the accommodation sort of things. Okay. Um, would you like would you like to move that one, Cam? Yeah, I'll move that. That okay. way um I'll bump that up to fourteen forty. Okay, and I'll second it the way we go. Right. Now we decided on the canoe polo and the Wellington wrestling that we wouldn't fund them because one it's out of the criteria and two there's best that's not all tacky people okay they're, they're holding the wrestling thing in all tacky but there's a couple of old tacky wrestlers and, and other than that no I, I just just i just feel quite strongly that if we start doing that we're going to have all sorts of other groups from outside of tacky coming to us for funding and we, that's that's not the purpose of our our grants yeah so are we all happy to, to not fund those two? Yeah. Okay, do we need yeah. to move and so, second that, um, Samara? Um, oh, I we need to move that we, do we have to remove that we, well, I hate the word reject, but. Yeah. Uh, yes, so if we could just. That we, maybe are, we are not yeah. going ahead yeah. with our application. Yeah, yeah, maybe we could do that as a, a group. Um, I'll be abstaining from the canoe polo one. Okay, okay well. Okay, well, well, I'll, I'll move one and Marilyn can move the other. And then we'll okay. flip them over and second the other ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll move the canoe polo <laughs> one as a no if Marilyn Hello, seconds that. And, there's, and the, we've had the discussion on it, that the fact that it's not actually, and also their, their application, what their, their grant application wasn't filled in correctly. And I think, as she said, they were, they were going to be breaking even or, and, and we're not here to, to make them help make a profit. Yeah, and also to actually, you know, have a bit, bit of room for the next time. Yeah, that's that, right. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's what got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, no, we're talking, we want this time, please. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and with my canoe, new polo hat on, I really wanted them to have some money, but <laughs> just can't actually justify it from the way that was put in. No. And the, the Wellington wrestling one, it's that's not an old it's okay, it's been held in old tacky, but we don't have <coughs> the hiring of Napurapura. And yeah. so and there's virtually no old tacky people participating. So your move, Marilyn. Absolutely. Do you want to second it, Cam? You can second that one because it's not it's not polo. Yep. Oh, he's frozen. You, yep, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, then. Not, not from up. All those in favour. <laughs> okay, now, Samara, do you want to do a close up and tell us what we've got left? So, if so, after all that decision, and I have just put the $2,000 in under the Otaki Principles Association, yeah. just so, so with all that money granted, you've got $1,411.74. Because we had talked about food bank for the balance. Yeah. Or is, it, is that actually applicable, Samara, that we can do so that? So I've had a chat to other uh, board secretaries, and what, what's been done previously is because the board, uh, the food bank have um, received a grant in this funding year, which is fine. They did receive it for hardware, um, which is a printer and a computer. So if the board decided to, they could grant um, the the rest of the total um to the food bank to assist with um the cost of food parcels so it would go directly into um the food bank to um benefit the community it would just be probably noted in the recommendation that um it was a not a, a, a not a wash up of the funds but because we didn't we can't carry it over the board agreed to um <coughs> grant it to the yeah. food bank Okay, so the decision we have to make now is do we give it to the, the schools for the kids? Or I would be tempted we... to actually 
give another thousand to the schools and yeah. then just leave it at that. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, that, okay. that bumps each school up to 750 from their 500. Mm. Yeah. So it's nice and even mm. for them. Yeah. yeah. So we've got 400 odd dollars left for them. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And that, leave, that leaves $411. So which, if I change my amount to 3,000, so that would be each school would get 750 yeah. each. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then you have four hundred and eleven dollars seventy four. You could choose to um um grant four hundred dollars to the food bank yeah. just to, uh, uh, that's a lot of food or yeah. at, at well, these times probably that. not, but <laughs> yeah, slightly less food now. Yeah. I think that would actually be a nice gesture. And the mm. I, I have to abstain from this chat on the food bank because I'm on that committee. But if I can just let people know <laughs> that. The Lions Club in Otaki has disbanded. So um, until now, every year, they have done a food drive for the food bank, which has been like half of their annual intake of food, and now they're not here to do it. So while the food bank's not sort of struggling right at this point in time, they are going to be thinking about how they're going to make it all happen without the without the Lions Club's contributions. So if we can give them 400, that'd be great. Yeah, no, that'd be good. And I'm sure Lucy would yeah, appreciate I'd be, I'd that. Be happy to do the that thing. Me too. So, so I, that, what we need to do is we need to um, move her in a seconder for the um, the school. So that's $750 yeah. each. I'll, I'll move to, that. Oh, I'll second it. Okay. And, there's, and we've had our discussion on it. And there's someone else who's got anything else they'd like to add. Okay. Yep. All those in favour, wave your paws. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I can't vote. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I will count Je you. <laughs> yeah, but Janice could do the wave a dog paw there. Yeah, that's the right. Yeah. I have okay. to say, um, when Jess talked about the schools, um, I'm, um, um, I'm the chair of the PTA at the school and um, there's kids that don't have shoes to do their sports. Yeah. So P PBS, which my kids go to, where the school's helping to buy shoes. So mm. I think for the Ōtaki um, area, this will go go and help some kids that... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, that's great. And what do we have to help then? The $400 to the food bank, we just... Yep, so I have um, I put something like the Ōtaki Community Board approves a community grant of four, $400 to the Ōtaki Food Bank to assist with the cost of food parcels. This amount is left over from the 2021 financial year and is not able to be carried over. Just So just giving that background, we do have a current application form for this year, so I can just tie that in um, and, and, and okay. let them know. Thanks, okay, well, I, I was, was going to say I'll exactly move. that. Yeah, I'll move that, and, um, and Cam can I'll second, second that. it. Yep, cool. And had our discussion. So all those in favour? Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the end of our grants money. Well done. Yep. We've got eleven dollars seventy-four. Well, the council can have that back. The council can have that back. Yeah. Okay. So moving yep. on. Money moving well on. We now have the road naming. Yep. Have you all had a, had a look at the names? Yeah. Was, yeah, was there any going on down County Road? And there. nobody's nobody's come to speak to speak for it. So, yeah. um, Dennis might. So I mean, we don't actually know what if there is a. a I mean, we've got the three names, but we don't really know if there is a real preference, do we? Uh, would we just safely assume that they've listed them in preference? So, yeah. so more to what we've had previously. Oh, hold on, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, the road naming is on page six. So I can't find it on page 15, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Te Awa Pohonu, Akituri Way, Oakland. I quite like option three myself. Took me a while to find it the first time too. Eh? Yeah. Took me a while to find it when I was first going through it. Yeah. But then if so, they've got a, a name stream on the boundary, that would be relevant. For Madam the, Chair. Do we that? Sorry, yes. Madam Chair. Just to round yes. out, there was a question around whether there's a preference. And yes. paragraph 15 on page seven, it notes that the three names provided in preferential, preferential order. order. Ah, thank you. And okay. And take that as an indication of preference. Mm. 
So that means really you've got no choice. Of course, no. Okay, well, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll move. I'll move that option one be accepted as the, and I hope everybody can pronounce it, as the as the name. Oh, for, I'll find it. Yeah. yeah. See, well I'll done. <laughs> as the yeah, as I'll, the road I'll name. I'd be able to for, second that. Yeah. Thank you very very much. So any discussion? Right, okay, nope. okay. So you got that one, Samara? Fantastic. God, you're good. Don't know what we'd do without you. Like, oh, we're ripping through this now. Right, members business. I've got mine here somewhere. Okie dokie. Yes. Actually, when I sat down and wrote down what I'd actually done over the last month, it was actually, I didn't think I'd been to much, but I've actually been to quite a bit. <laughs> so quite a few briefings. One on the representation review, which was really interesting. And um, they did the new boundaries and everything for that too. So that's that's quite interesting that some of Tihoro now is going to be in Waikanae ward. But um, that means you can still stay in their camp so long as you're yes. actually nominated by someone in Old Taki. Um, there was a, the land development one, which was interesting again on the, the new fact that you can put you know more houses on your section and things like that. And that was very, very interesting. I've been to council meetings, the review on the beach bylaw a year on, and that was that was quite good, what they've learned and, and everything from that. A couple of Elevate meetings. Went to the CLG meeting last on Monday night at Fletcher's, which was a very cold night. We were supposed to be having a bridge walk, and of course we couldn't because of that terrible, terrible weather. Uh, Winstone Lake CLG, I went there last night. Um, that was quite a small meeting because... And a lot of people not not there for some reason. So that was all over in an hour. And I've been to a, um, I think you were meant to be coming to the signage meeting, Cam, weren't you? Yes. That one, that one at Fletcher's. We had that the other night as well. And that was, we've got another one in a week, I think. And that's just on the, the, the destination signage, not your... Um, not the signs that NZTA put up saying Oteki 500 metres and, and all those sorts. Of this is our actual destination signage that went through the Board of Inquiry when, when James went and presented to the Board of Inquiry. He, um, he managed to get us sort of funding and everything for destination signage. So that's what we're working on at the moment. The only thing is you're still bound by the restrictions of NZTA or Waka Kotahi on how many letters, how many words, what sort of pictures or whatever you are having. It, it, it's, the, it's really quite rigid, the, the conditions on, on the signs. So it's not going to be an easy task figuring out how we're going to put as much on this as possible with as little as possible. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like the big electronic signs. I don't like them changing very no, much very often. No, cause... well, we tried for an electronic sign, but we can't have one. Unfortunately, they're too expensive. We'll be hoping for that for the Pope Festival. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. But what, what we're looking at now is, is the skinned ones that which that will get changed out maybe, you know, because they, they do wear. So you can probably, yeah, put one up for, for certain things. But but then the, they've got to do road, you know, they've got to they've got to get people off on the side of the road and they've got to have safety measures and everyone's health and safety stuff when they're actually doing things to the signs, which we sort of thought might have been a sort of a way we could leverage to get to the electronic ones, but no, it didn't work. I know where there's a lot of road cones if they need them. <laughs> no. Oh, there's plenty of those around. Oh. So, so that was that was a that was a really interesting. And I'm looking on. I'm looking forward to the next one. I think it's next week or the week after. I'm not quite sure. Sasha's going to send out a meeting invite for it. So, so that and so that's that's me done and dusted. Oh, yep. Marilyn, do you want to go? Oh, well, uh, yeah, I haven't got a whole lot to report, actually, apart from, you know, the normal, um, I've been to the Otaki Health and Wellbeing meetings and um, community network forums and the normal meetings that I go to every month. There's nothing much more to, to report on those, but I did have an interesting phone call the other day. So this gentleman phoned me and he said... I'm really concerned about the fire sirens. Oh, no. He rang me as well. Did he? Yeah, oh, I missed yes. out. Excellent. Yes, yes. So 
I did say to him, look, you're the first person that's brought this to my attention. So to bring you up to speed, Cam, this guy lives in a quiet cul-de-sac. He suffers PTSD right. and he's not sure. And he, hold on, and COVID. Don't yeah, yeah. COVID and he's not on. sure he can continue to live in his home because the fire siren, which is a Second World War um, air raid siren, is is really too much for him and it makes his heart race and why do we need them because in actual fact everybody has pages and cell phones and could we do something about getting them removed mm. i said i think it's a fire service problem that's what i said, it he said the fire no it's not no it's not he said it's a council thing and i said no, it with me. i'll take it to the community board and we will talk about it so we've done that mm. Yeah, no. If you I, ring I, I, back, I, I can say we've talked that's about probably that. why he rang you because I told him to ring the fire department. <laughs> I said, "Well, it's not a, it's not a council thing, and it's, mm. you know, from but what he I went, I, went off seven times one night. But I mean, I don't. Know. From what, from my knowledge of having a dad who's a fireman, I understand they all get paged, mm. and um, when. Um, the first person that gets to the fire station, they turn it off. And the reason it does keep going and going is if they don't have enough people to crew a, crew a truck. So that's why sometimes it yep. does go for longer. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, the siren is there actually primarily to um, let the public know that there may be some people racing around very soon. Mm. Yeah. Well, there may be an issue. I did well, it always make sure, but I think it makes it Yeah. yeah. I just, especially over the, all that bad weather when it was going off, I just kept thinking, oh my gosh, not another accident. <laughs> oh. You know, trees down and things like that. So anyway, so well, I'm, I'm pleased he rang somebody else because when he rang me, I said, you know, he said, oh, should I ring the other board members? I said, well, I don't think there's any real need. <laughs> you could have said no. I think that would have taken Well, I thought like saying I don't think there's any real need is sort of like saying no. It's not quite direct enough. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Eklund. Do you like the short answer? Right. No. Or the long what answer? I said, no. What I actually said to him was, was to actually email me with his reasoning and his, his problem, and then I would see if I could follow it up with somebody. But he obviously didn't decide not to email me and ring you instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know what he's talking about for a while. Yeah. And I said to him, you're telling me this because why? Yeah. You know? I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was sitting in the car in the car park at Bowen Hospital waiting to go in for my appointment. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so you were saved, Cam, but it's, uh, don't hold your breath. It still might bring you. We know your phone number, Cam. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully he doesn't. I, he might okay, Cam, I take it you went to audit and risk? What, anything yes. else? Yes, you I went to audit Australia and risk. As well. Well, that wasn't for council reasons. Well, you um, can still tell us. <laughs> no, I still managed to um, completely stuff up paperwork on both sides, having not <laughs> travelled internationally for a very long time. And I found out that if you miss your Monday morning flight back, you have a nine-hour wait on the terminal to the next flight, because mm. there's not a lot of flights from uh, Sydney to Wellington, unfortunately. So, so, yes, highly entertaining that was. Mm. Um, but yeah, orders and risks, nothing exceptional from there. Um, I did raise the point that with um, Aidan Maxwell, um, unfortunately suffering a heart attack, how did the contingency side of things kick in with people taking over? And it sounds like that actually worked quite well because Sean had been shadowing and, and doing a fair bit with um, Hayden. So the transition to Sean taking over was actually quite smooth. Um, no other things of note came out of that meeting. Um, I attended a council meeting, um, which Christine was unable to attend um, that day, which was a very, very interesting one in the end with the vote on the um, iwi positions on the relevant committees. So that was actually really interesting to, to be involved with. Um, and I did have a, a chat with Denise um, Harpeta there as well. Um, and I did ask the question there, you know, is it possible to get iwi representation on the community boards? Um, but that's sort of enshrined in, in legalese, and so it's not, um, but there might be other ways to mm. have a look at that. Um, and other than having a, a really, really good chat with the um, with the, the mobile Kai people that give the, the food out outside Maori lands on Tuesday, uh, Tuesdays, that was very interesting to see 
just how many people were actually coming along and grabbing food and how many people and the fact that they're actually starting now to cook meals and deliver them. Um, so I had spoken to them about whether they wanted to put in an application to try and get some more um, upgrade their facilities, but I, they didn't put an application in in the end. Mm. It's so a shame. Maybe something we can work with them in the future. Because mm. they're doing a good job as well. Yep, and I'm happy to say I didn't receive a phone call about the fire siren. No, oh, wait, you'll get, you will, will you will. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've had the lovely emails from Anne Lawler. Oh, oh gosh, yeah, well, haven't we all? Oh, I haven't. haven't oh, you? Marilyn, you're missing out. I know. Oh, well. oh. oh do you feel deprived? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, um, that's that. Uh, oh, it's all our business. Nearly there, guys. Confirmation of the minutes. Take them as read. Yes, indeed. Any matters arising? Uh -uh. No. Mm -hmm. no. Would someone like to move those minutes or a true and correct account of our last meeting? Yes, I'm happy to. Would someone like, would you like to second that, Marilyn? Of course. Thank you, my dear. That's that done. Matters under action. <laughs> or in action. Yeah. Oh. oh, Cameron, really? Well, I, it's just funny that before I, I went to the boards, I came along a number, to a number of meetings and I was talking about the free Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> and that, oh. and that to, to me... Some... I don't quite understand why it's taken nearly four years. So, so um, through you, Madam Chair, if you want me yeah. to just run <laughs> quickly, roll through the matters under action. Um, yep. Just yep. noting, at, currently at Council at this stage, we do have a lot of staff um, not at yeah. work, um, sick. So the um, following up of some matters under action has been um, delayed by that. Um, I'm happy to, when they're back in the office, just flick you guys an email if I can get some updates around that. <laughs> Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank the Osaka Railway that. Station is pretty much out of our hands currently. So um, Andrew Tor, who sits in the infrastructure team, um, I follow up with him and he he said there's no update from that. So um, I, we can still just keep that on the matters and direction if you're happy to do that. Um, the same with um, Winstone Lakes, that's just continuing and also the um, Otaki Civic Theatre, there's no further update. Um, the free Wi-Fi on the main street um, was sitting un as, um, was sitting under Sean Mellon, but due to him now being acting chief executive um, and also being away sick, um, I haven't been able to follow up on that, but um, he's back in the office tomorrow, so I'll give him a couple of days grace and um, just <laughs> see where, because it, 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 it was pretty much they just mm. needed to sort out a contractor. So um, my... Um, mission is to have that off the matters under action by uh, the next couple of meetings. So, <laughs> well done. <laughs> so that's, that, that's that been recorded. That is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Janice is smiling. Yeah, you'll, you'll um, be held to that. <laughs> council flats in Autaki is continuing, so I don't know if you want to keep that on the matters under action. Um, um, there's no further update. It's just um, what has been previous, previously happening. Probably, probably nice to know yeah. when it's completed. Yeah, 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 yeah so no, that's no, kind yeah, just leave, yep, it. Just leave, leave yeah. it now. Obviously, yeah. they're ticking away through that. They, there is they are, um, some. I, I've been seeing. I've been seeing. You know, I drive past the. You know, most of them. You know, most days, and and it's.